Art is a very powerful voice for offering people options for ways of living. As a photographer, I get to experience a lot of different ways that people are living. To be able to harvest those experiences and transfer it into something that is, that is art directed, that is more illustrated, that is more designed, then I'm going through a process that really taps into something deeper than just being witness. sort of born into this garage as it belongs to the man that I bought my first bike from when I was a teenager. I was seduced by British motorbikes and at the time was taking pictures as well so, so they all kind of happened together. This is an 8x10 Deerdorf. I had been exposed to it by working in a studio and these, these cameras were not really being used and I was really romanced by them. It's glass and film and dark space in between them. They're just beautiful as objects and they smell good and they feel good. These bikes and the cameras and, and everything, I feel like they're meant to be used and then they break or you break them and then you fix them and then you keep, you keep using them. Keep making, making memories. As a photographer, we're sort of in the business of making memories, so it all kind of fits nicely together. This was in 1993 in New York when I first moved to New York. I lived next door to Willem Dafoe and I used to see him downstairs all the time in the bar. Lucky strike. In a celebrity situation, I've done groups a couple times where my set is all Oscar-nominated guys. If there's a portrait of somebody that's known in a particular way, you want to believe it when you see it. And that's how I feel about the pictures. I want, to I want people to believe them when they see them. To find that vulnerability is what makes it lasting and what makes certain pictures last for hundreds of years. My name is Joy Tyken. I'm a designer in the Twin Cities area. We are at Honey Studios uh, filming with Bill Phelps today. So we have a little bit of an experiment going on here. I'm tying this into the world of food and wine and the senses. We have this giant magnum of champagne. We have a taxiderm lamb. We have a whole octopus. that food and wine and travel is just, you know, it's, it's a big wide open field. Just kind of gravitating toward it. You can't lose if you know what you're looking for. On the journalistic side, I'm sent on assignments that are kind of adventure and beauty based, which is definitely a driving force in what I do and really what, how I live my life. The idea of hunting pictures in the street or in any sort of situation in travel, especially, you are immediately entrenched in the experience. It's, it's, it's incredibly intuitive and I think that I'm never happier than when I'm in that position. I found myself in the streets kind of setting myself up to wait. 
you know, seeing a piece of light and watching where the light was moving on a building and camping out and waiting and watching that piece of light. I think a great photograph is nothing without a moment, whatever that moment is. I continue to try to exercise these other muscles because I know I'm speaking and listening to something really deep inside of me and I, I, I want to hear what it has to say. Put your shoes on. These are the ones, they fit? They make the loudest sound of all. The robins do? What, what is that one? Do you hear it? My daughter, I want to be able to take her with me. She loves taking pictures and drawing and painting and constantly, constantly involved in, and aware of beauty. I have to show her everything I can show her. The most powerful exercise that one can go through is to have children. She's definitely a great influence to me that is already affecting the way that I shoot because she's affecting the way that I see the world. She's effortlessly teaching me things about life and the world and love that I don't know if I ever would have been able to grasp. 